So one of our interns, Chris, is out of commission for the next couple weeks, so we wanted to dedicate this episode of LIE to him. Get well soon, Chris. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Peters. And I'm Rebecca Farina. And you're watching LIE. LIE. Coming up, we'll highlight a local athlete We'll take a look at a significant milestone here at PATV. And we have a new tech tip that you might find helpful. All, All that, that and more on LIE. Incoming. Oh, here it comes. Oh, nice Ooh, catch. Thank you. I think that's this week's hashtag. It's this week's hashtag of the week, but we need to look at last week's, Let's which was... Let's take a look at water quality awareness yep. hashtag. Uh, this one comes from a local producer, Phyllis. Ooh. Oh, just everybody be aware that the local drains in your town may actually lead into the sound. Yeah, uh, be This with next that. one's from me. You know, I was out for a, a <laughs> mod hunt. And, uh, you know, you should just be aware of uh, the water quality right. when you're out searching for Pokemon, everybody. Yeah, there's living creatures. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that. And uh, this one comes from the Rio Olympics. Looks like the uh, high dive water turned green. Yeah. Not very good. Uh, that's awkward. Yeah. Because actually, this week's hashtag of the week is hashtag Olympics 2016. Yep. It's happening right now in Rio. And we want you to share your favorite aspects yeah. of this year's Olympics. Whether you're in Rio yourself or you're just watching on your couch at home, send us pics, uh, tweets, anything to the addresses below. Yep, hashtag we'll Olympics 2016. That's yeah. all you gotta do. Speaking of Olympics, uh, we actually have some uh, really good athletes right here in our hometown. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We have Sam Law, which is actually, uh, she's a runner at Great Neck North High School. Yep. And we have this video all Let's about her. Take a look. My name is Samantha Law. I am currently a uprising junior from Great Neck North High School, and I run cross country, winter track, and spring track. I started running when I was in middle school, like the very, very end of my seventh grade year after I had microplastic pneumonia. I did spring track, and I was the worst 100 or 200 meter runner you'd ever seen in your entire life. I was the worst, the absolute worst. And then, I guess my interest developed more in eighth grade when I was like, oh, now it's time we have to step up because all of the upperclassmen, they just left and that was the real core of our team. For us to lose a huge chunk of our team like that, it was like we really had to step up and that's, I guess, when my interest first really started. For cross country, we only have two races that we can really run, the 4K and the 5K. For winter track, I run the 600, the 1000, the 1500, and a few relays including the 4x4, 4x8, and a bunch of DMR, SMR, MMR races that we do. And for spring track, I do the same weird relays and the 400, 800, 1500, and occasionally a 3000. Right before the line, I'm always really anxious, but once the gun goes off, I pretty much just try to take the lead. I'm always the front runner, so I always like to take the lead in the beginning, even if I know I can't hold it out and then everything just kind of disappears. The only things that I can hear are my own feet against the track, the feet of the people behind me, and my two coaches' voices. Uh, Sam is phenomenal. She's so easy to work with. She's the easy, like, just a very coachable kid. Um, from day one, I knew that this kid was gonna be something special. She instantly uh, impacted the team. She came out the first day, and you could tell she just wanted to be the best on the team and has been working to that point every day since then. I'll give her a time to hit in an interval session and she'll always be two seconds faster than that time. She's also fast and can run long distance, so it's, it's a rare combination. She can do anything from the 200 meter up to the 3000 in track, which is kind of a rare thing. Nassau County is a, one of the stronger counties in, in New York State, so it's difficult to make the state meet. And we at Great Neck North, we haven't had anybody in over 20 years make the state meet. And Sam has made it all three seasons of her sophomore year. So 
cross country, winter track, and spring track. She was a state competitor, and she was actually all state in the winter. And she competes. I mean, she she competed very nicely in the in the spring state meet, and we're looking forward to next year being there and getting closer to the top. Every day when I wake up, it's usually quickly have breakfast, go to school, go through the school day, get to practice, go through practice, go home, do all the work, repeat the whole thing over again. And so a lot of times I'll find myself really, really tired the next day. And the biggest thing that helps me push through all the workouts and all the long runs and the hills and whatever we're doing that day is probably the fact that if I don't do these workouts, I'm never gonna get better. So you always have to think, what is my competition doing today that I'm not doing? So for myself, for high school, I would like to continue to make states for every season, but that's also something that I'd like to do with my team. So for next year, for this upcoming cross country season, we have a really good shot at making it to states as a team. So that's something that I've always wanted to do. And being alone there just seems so weird and so foreign that I want my team there with me the next time I get to go. Something else that I always really wanted to do was to go to nationals. This year I made it for the spring season, but I wasn't able to go because it was so close to all my finals. So next year I'd like to be able to go to regionals for cross country for Nike with my team and maybe we could get the at-large bid. Another thing I'd really like to do is go to nationals indoor with a relay team and outdoors as well with another relay team, if not just an individual event. I see the same challenges. She comes to me often during the school day and is stressed out about school, stressed out thinking about the next race, the, the competition and how she's going to do. At this point I kind of know that it's who she is and, and she's always okay, you know, so I after a minute or two, I'll just walk away and, you know, and she'll be ready for the race and, and she always does her thing. She's remarkable. Mike, why are you running? Well, that last segment inspired me. I'm practicing for the 2020 Olympics. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, will you take a selfie of me sure. on my Instagram? Sure, give me a phone. Uh, did you I can't lose find it? my phone. Yeah, I lost it again. Oh. Always happens. Keep buying new phones. Oh, no. Well, you can find it. Steven Vassalero knows just what to do. Check out his new tech tip. Show is starting. I'll talk to you later. Hello there, and welcome to a new episode of LIE Tech Tips. My name is Steven Vassalero. In today's interconnected world, it feels like you'd be cut off from the rest of the planet entirely without a smartphone or tablet in hand. So getting one lost or stolen can seem like a nightmare scenario for most people. That's why today, on LIE Tech Tips, I'm going to be showing you how to track down a lost or stolen iPad or iPhone using your home computer. Do note though, for this to work, you'll need to have an Apple ID ready to go. If you've ever downloaded anything from the App Store, you should already have one of these. If not, you can easily create one online. Without further ado, let's get started. First, we need to make sure that a few settings are enabled on your iPhone for location tracking to work. Head on over to the Settings button, and then scroll down until you see a tab labeled Privacy. From there, click on Location Services and make sure that they're enabled. Once that's done, head back to the main settings page. Just below the Privacy tab, you should see a button labeled iCloud. Click on that and scroll to the bottom of the page. Click on Find My iPhone, and just make sure that both Find My iPhone and Send Last Location are enabled. Now that location tracking has been enabled, you should be able to track down your device no matter where it is in the world. To do this, go to your computer and open up your web browser to iCloud.com. Once you're logged in, click the Find My iPhone button on the bottom right corner of the page. Once the map is loaded, you should see an All Devices button on the top of the page. Click on it, and then click the device you want to track down. You should now have a map of your device's last known location on the screen, as well as three options in the top right corner. 
play sound will play a loud beeping noise on your device. This can be helpful if your phone is somewhere close by, but you don't know exactly where it is. Lost mode lets you leave a message and phone number on your phone's lock screen in case anyone finds it. It also locks your device with a passcode and sends email updates about its location. Lastly, if all else fails, the erase button can be used to remove all personal information from your device. Be warned that this permanently erases everything stored in your device, including phone numbers, emails, passwords, photographs, music, and contact information. Only use this if you're 100% sure that your device is lost for good or you have a backup ready to restore your phone with. Hopefully, you'll now be able to track down your device no matter where it is in the world. This should come in handy next time your device gets lost behind the couch or someone tries to take it when you're not looking. Thank you so much for watching this episode of LI Tech Tips. If you have any advice you'd like to share or any questions you'd like to ask us, please send an email to lietechtips at gmail.com. My name has been Steven Vassalero, and... I think I need to go look for my phone now. You know, that was a really great tech tip. Yeah, it's yeah. not lost forever. You can find it, guys. Yeah, because if you lose a phone like this, it costs you a lot of money, you know? And you can find it. Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey. Steven Vesselero, everybody. <laughs> yeah, that, that was Steven from Tech Tips, everybody. Hmm, I think we need some supper powers to deal with that awkwardness. Yes, Let's check please. out this new segment of the Supper Girls. Welcome to our one-on-one -on -one special on LIE with the Supper Girls. Today we're going to talk about the physical challenges that they faced and if the weather impacted their trip. wasn't that grueling. <laughs> our, our bodies did, did, they did pretty well, actually. Um, we paced ourselves knowing that we still had more than a thousand miles to go. Um, so we, we learned to uh, give our muscles the rest they needed. Um, the only thing that really suffered were our feet, because they were mostly exposed to the cold all the time um, so our, our feet really took a toll but in terms of our physical endurance I think we were we were fine um, Lou had some yeah I had some issues with my hands uh, and I think that's mostly joints. from the cold like just joints and everything muscularly everything was fine we had a lot of broadside wind so there was a lot of paddling on one side and the majority of those broadside days uh, were coming out of the east, west, the west. So there was a lot of paddling on the left side. So that yeah. having to grip the paddle in that, that bottom hand, it just between the inflammation and then having that constant pull and stress on those mm -hmm. joints, it gave, gave a little bit of an issue. We ate a lot of jerky. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we, we definitely had, it, it kind of evolved as we went because we started out with the free strike camp food and trail mix and bars and jerky and protein bars. Yeah, plantain chips. I said that already. So good. So amazing. Um, but that is, you go along, you kind of get sick of things. And so yeah. by the end of the trip, we really weren't eating the cabin food almost at all. No. Um, and when we did have it, we really just had it, we would make it in the morning when we made breakfast and we would have it for lunch during the day because they're also very heavy. And at the end of the day, you don't really need something that heavy. So we would use it for like the bigger energy throughout the day for lunch. And then at night we would have like tuna, she would have anchovies and, and sardines. sardines. Oh, sardines and anchovies. <laughs> they sardines. both come in. Like peaches <laughs> from Georgia. Peaches. 
So we didn't have shoes for a lot of the way. Um, we we keep we kept losing shoes. <laughs> the we, ocean. We had them and we lost. Them. We had them. We lost them. The ocean's a prankster. Yeah. So she kept taking our shoes. <laughs> Only one. One at a time. One, one, one at a time. Those two, like, what, the, the first day. day. The first time she took two, and then then it was it was just one at a time. But so we would always be in either just the the socks of the dry suit which don't would wear out and so then they were no longer dry and then when you're walking on the beach there's these little sand spurs evil little suckers and they grow on bushes so you don't just get one you like you literally you would step and you would look and your whole foot would be covered with these spiky little balls and they would stick in your feet and so for the next like week we're so we and with the salt water like, trying to find those thorns. Man. They were terrible. They're yeah. awful. And then we ran into cactuses when we got through them. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Longer. Awful. Longer spikes. Longer terrible thorns. It was cold most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, it was unseasonably warm when we left. And then rapidly got to being unseasonably cold in New Jersey. And then Virginia was actually the most template. Mm -hmm. And then the further south we went, the, the more unseasonably cold it got. Yeah. Um, and then everybody kept saying it would warm up, but then it never did. <laughs> and then did. when we finally got to Florida, it snowed. It so was, we were bringing <laughs> the winter with us, apparently. <laughs> Until we got to maybe Fort Lauderdale. No. No. Well, no, when we got to it Melbourne. Was warm. It was Melbourne, warm we in finally Melbourne. jumped in. Yeah, that's true. That was the first, early. Yeah, the first day after three months and 17 days or something. Yeah. We finally jumped in the water because we were actually hot. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> in Florida. In Florida. Wow, those girls went through a lot. I couldn't do that, but that's why they're called the Supper Girls, so... Stay tuned next week when we find out the mental challenges they faced. That's going to be very interesting. We're going to learn a lot about more of these supper girls. Don't miss it. The summer blazes on, and Long Island has tons of outdoor events to help you cool down. If you have a child interested in marine life, then check out Cold Spring Harbor's Catch and Keep Trout Fishing event. Children and parents can get together and catch trout fish. This is a weekly event that is on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays in the late morning and early afternoon, and Saturdays and Sundays during the late afternoon. An admission fee of $5 per person is required. Lastly, the Great Next Social Center offers many opportunities to take part in community events over the summer. With this year's presidential election around the corner, you can express your thoughts and opinions on the candidates and their stances on today's issues at the weekly World In Depth events, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. PATV's very own Our Veteran Stories will also be showcased at the Great Next Social Center the second Friday of each month at 2 p.m. You can catch a screening of Our Veteran Stories on Friday, August 12th. And lastly, if you want to beat the summer heat, the Great Next Social Center provides transportation to the Parkwood Pool if you're a registered member. All of these events are great opportunities to stay active as the summer winds down. Let's take a look at what's coming up this week on PATV. As always, the weekend mornings are for the kids. We start off with Adventures with Mickey at 8.30 a.m., followed immediately at 9 by an hour of classic cartoons that you won't want to miss. It's summer, so as you know, the village of Great Neck Plaza has its summer concert series. Catch them after the cartoons at 10 a.m. And on Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m., be sure to catch the latest concerts. There's a new concert from the summer series every Tuesday night. 
Wednesdays at 1.30 p.m., be sure to catch Dance Visions New York's performance entitled Isadora Duncan into the 21st Century. Shirley Romaine narrates as the dancers take your breath away. Thursday at 8 p.m., catch PATV's own savvy senior Sabina Miller and her new production entitled Seniors for Seniors. Sabina and guests discuss all the things to do at the Great Neck Senior Center. And as always, all of PATV's original programming will stream live on the web so you can take PATV with you anywhere. Just log on to patv.org dash livestream. Oh, and thanks for watching. Wow, so we have a lot of great shows here on PATV. We sure do. And one of them just celebrated 1,000 programs. Yeah, that's incredible. That's over 1,000 hours of televised programming over the course of 20 years. That's right. Yeah. Yafa Soleimani. Yeah, so to commemorate, we threw her a party. Uh, so let's take a look. Yafa came here and she started producing what? What, do you, what was the name of the show? Mava Shoma TV. Okay, and between uh, me and you. Okay, and explain what, what was your it's what were your dreams there? <laughs> well, what, tell us. It's in the is a uh, entertainment show, and my goal was is a uh, one thousand, and uh, I work hard, and Sherry said today, my sister, she said over one thousand. Because hours. usually at the uh, New Year, I have a five hour, four hour, uh, and now I'm so happy I got my goal. And always I said to my program, here is my second house. And I love all of you, Mike, Grace, Erica, Marcelo is my teacher in the beginning. Whatever he teach me, <laughs> he helped me a lot in the beginning. And Shirley Bruno is, uh, honestly, I love her so much. But you were scared. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the beginning, Why? 21 <laughs> years ago, I scared her. <laughs> like as a student. <laughs> I think what the most important thing is with all of the shows with Yafa, she came here and brought the Persian community into our studio and to watch our programs and to learn about public access TV. And we're always grateful for that. Thank you so much. I, we all agree. <laughs> we're just thinking of the same thing. So it's been a great show today here on LIE. We highlighted a local athlete, Sam Law. We had a new Supper Girls segment, they're so awesome, and a new tech tip. Yep, and then we took a look at the party we threw for Yafa. That's right. And did you know who started here right around the same time as Yafa? Who? Our very own Grace Grella. Of course. So why don't we take a look at the vibe of the week with Grace Grella. But first, before we go, don't forget that hashtag. Yes. Hashtag of the week, Olympics 2016. Olympics 2016. Show us everything you got. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Grace Grella. Thanks so much, Mike and Rebecca. You know, there's R&R &R and then there's M&R. And M&R is our R&R &R here at PATV. We love you, you're doing a great job, thanks. You two create good vibes. That, it, makes, it makes it so easy for me to do this segment. Loving it, loving you. And it's, uh, as I said, it's time for everybody to have a little hazy, lazy days of summer this week. Uh, kick back, try to relax, don't take things so seriously. It's going to be one of those um, less than energetic weeks I want to classify it as. 
So take advantage of that, you know, recharge your batteries, do something that makes you feel good, and maybe even listen to the Farrell song, Because I'm Happy. Whatever it takes, get yourself into that positive zone, put some pep in your step, and know that the vibes, they're always good when you want them to be. Until next time, stay in the positive zone.